One thing I love about working on FreeDOS is that there's still an active developer community. We're not stuck with programs that were last updated in the 1990s. People are working on new programs all the time. And a recent example of that is an editor called the DOS World Editor, DWED. It's still an alpha release, so it's still got a little bit of bugs in it, but it's an interesting entry into editors. It tries to be a couple of different things, a distraction-free writing environment, so there's no you know, menus and things like that that'll distract you. Everything is accessed through uh, the function keys and the keyboard. And it also, if you're a developer, provides some simple syntax highlighting. So let's take a look here at DWED, the DOS World Editor, running on FreeDOS. So here I've just extracted uh, DWED onto my system and let's take a look at the files that we've got in here. So at the top of the directory uh, there's a file called license and uh, that is the MIT license. So if we just do a more on uh, license you can see that that's the text to the MIT license. So this is an open source software program. So I really love seeing that in 2020, people are writing programs uh, for DOS and not only that, they're, they're making them open source. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much for that DOS world. Uh, other things in here, so you got some PNG files. Those are screenshots. So if you want to see what DOS world looks like, you can uh, download this uh, zip file and look at those screenshots and that is a great way to see what DOS world looks like. I'll put a download link in the description of the video. There's also a README file. That's a markdown file, but it's simple enough we can read it just by reading it through more. So we'll do more on readme.md, which is the markdown file. And so you can see this is the uh, the text file editor for MS-DOS, and it runs on any 8086 computer uh, or higher. So you don't actually need like a 486 or a 386 or a Pentium to run this editor. It will run on an 8086 uh, CPU. So basically anything IBM XT grade. So if you're a hobbyist uh, uh, computer uh, user and you have the original gear classic uh, PC hardware, you should be able to run DWED on your system. Uh, DWED has some neat features, including it will read files, it supports files over 64K. A lot of editors are limited to that, uh, that data size, 64K, but this is able to read files larger than that. It has some simple syntax highlighting. Uh, languages include C and C++, also Pascal, which is the program languages written in, uh, basic assembler and some other things, including uh, DOS batch. It does some uh, simple, uh, or supports multiple files at the same time. Uh, it's got a really neat uh, keyboard or, or clipboard uh, system. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it it's just kind of a neat entry into the editor space. Now it does have some restrictions, uh, probably because it's written as an alpha version. It hasn't gone through a lot of revisions yet, but also because it's written in Pascal. So uh, string length is limited to 255 characters. Uh, also, there's no undo or redo facility, so that's just not in DWED. So if you mess up, you kind of have to go back to what you had previously saved. Uh, so let's go ahead and try DWED and kind of see what it looks like. So you go into the bin directory, and there's DWED. So we'll go ahead and run DWED. Now, without any... Uh, file options. It's just going to bring up an empty file called no name.txt. That file doesn't exist yet. So once I type some text into this file and then later try to exit the program, it's going to prompt me to say, do I want to save my file in no name.txt? So uh, this is what you've got. There's no uh, distracting menu at the top. You know, hitting alt doesn't do anything. Uh, so everything has to be accessed through the, uh, the function keys, the F keys on your keyboard. Uh, you can get the help by doing F1. So we'll just do F1 here and we'll kind of look just a couple of options in the help menu. Uh, you got the information about DWED and right there you can see at the bottom of the screen it's an MIT license and there's where you can download it. Again, I'll put that in the video description. For the internals, uh, you're going to see a couple of different places in the program. It's going to ask if we can do something, and typically the response is going to be yes or no, Y or N. And uh, escape will be the same thing as no. Uh, to navigate the help, by the way, I'm just using the arrow keys up and down, and then I'm hitting enter to select the next option. So navigation, standard, 
editor navigation applies. You're going to do up, down, left, right, home and end, page up, page down, things like that, right? It's the standard way that you would uh, navigate through a file. Feels very natural on DWED. The clipboard, you're going to select your text using uh, the shift key and then up, down, left, right, or the home and end keys, things like that. And then you're going to use the standard, I would say, word processor shortcuts that you're used to on modern systems. Control X to cut text, Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it, right? Things like that. In search, you can do Control F and that'll do a case insensitive search. If you need that to be case sensitive, it's just shift control F. And then if you want to repeat that same search, you do control K. And then let's sort of the last one I'll kind of look at here is the file. So uh, how do you get files into and out of DW Ed? So, uh, you know, right here, I started a new file. Uh, so since I didn't give any file options, it started as no name.txt. If I wanted to save that, well, if I tried to exit the editor, it will prompt me if I want to save it, but I can also save it on my own just by hitting the F2 or Control S. Uh, and I can save that as a different file name using Shift F2, and you can also load a file into the buffer using F3. So uh, let's do Escape, and we'll get out of that, and so we can just sort of look at uh, the editor as itself. And so we'll go ahead and just type in, uh, this is a line of text and we can print out, uh, let's say, hello world. And this is just a normal text file. And so the syntax highlighting doesn't really do a lot for us, but you can see that it's, it's highlighting the punctuation. So my text is in, uh, that, uh, gray against a darker gray background and uh, the punctuation uh, is in that sort of cyan color. So you can kind of see where your punctuation is. And that's the syntax highlighting you get for a uh, just a plain text file. Now I can save that. So again, I can save that using F2 or Control S. I'll just hit F2 on my screen or my keyboard. You can see that's going to flash a little bit. And uh, that's now saved my file. If I uh, uh, added any of it, any more text, so if I went down here and just said, you know, the end, and then I tried to exit the file by hitting escape, it's going to ask if I want to save that file. Let's go ahead and cancel. And you can see that uh, uh, up at the top of the screen on the right hand side, you're seeing a little bit of statistics about the uh, file, by the way. You're seeing uh, I'm in column one, uh, I'm on line five out of five lines. And so as I move up, you can see that it's changing where I am in the, in the, uh, in the file. So now I'm on line one out of five. And as I move the cursor to the right, you can see uh, the cursor uh, position is being updated, so now I'm position 10. Let's save the file one more time, and you can see that star has gone away, and so that indicates that uh, the file is uh, saved. It's not, not modified after saving. So now we can do escape, and that'll get us out of the editor. And there's that file that I created, no name.txt. Oops. No name.txt. Now it can do simple syntax highlighting against uh, different programming languages. So let's look at one example in C. So I've got a, a sample program in my uh, source directory. And so that was when I did another video about uh, programming a solitaire. So let's, uh, let's copy that file over. Copy source sol.c and we'll save that as sol.c. And so let's edit that file, dwed sol.c. So it's not doing the same sort of deep syntax highlighting you get in some other editors like Fed, which, you know, supports, uh, you know, numbers might get highlighted in a certain color, uh, strings would get highlighted in a different color, keywords in a different color, um, you know, the brackets and things like that, uh, and semicolons, they get different, different color. This is just, uh, you know, text is going to be in that, uh, that gray text and, um, you know, highlights are going to be in our keywords of, or any other kind of highlighting is happening in that sort of cyan color, that different blue color, uh, which works well if you just need to, you know, kind of keep an eye on, on what's where in your file. This is again, sort of, I would describe it as sort of a, uh, minimal focus, uh, you know, text editor for programming or writing text or whatever you need. This is a great way to, uh, do distraction free writing. Let me exit out of this. 
And we can actually see the source code to DWED. So if I back up one directory and go into the source directory, you can see I've got a lot of different Pascal files because that's where this was written. It was written as Pascal. And at the top of the screen, you can see I've got uh, a compiled version of DWED. So I don't even have to put it in my path. So uh, let's go ahead and run DWED on uh, DWED.pass. And so this is the source code to DWED. And you can see at the top, I've got a comment block. And then uh, down below that, I got the uh, program itself. And so uh, you can see the syntax highlighting that's happening in a Pascal program. So if you want to write your own editor and you uh, are a Pascal programmer, this is a great place to start. Uh, but also, this is just kind of a great, as I said, distraction-free editor for DOS. And so I'll kind of leave it there. I'll kind of exit uh, out of uh, DWED. So before I go, I just want to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. I appreciate your support. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I wanted to recognize you here. So thank you very much for that. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.